uh, moving on to the, our next uh, speaker is uh, Tori. So Tori is from Evansville, Indiana in the United States. And Tori is the Virginia G. Schroeder Curator of Art at Evansville Museum of Arts, History and Science. And she oversees a 15,000 foot uh, square foot of exhibition space and is responsible for over 20,000 permanent collection objects ranging from prehistory, prehistory to modernity. Tori works with the community on exhibitions and program development by seeking guidance on cultural uh, and sharing authorship when writing exhibitions. Tori's talk is titled Collecting in the Now. So when you're ready, Tori, over to you. All right, thank you for the introduction. I appreciate this opportunity. So for Collecting in the Now, um, as noted before that, I'm the Virginia G. Schrader Curator of Art. And if we can go to the next slide, there's my bio, if anyone is interested in looking at it later. But here is a question for the collective. How can we interpret an invisible enemy? As a 21st century curator, it is our job to collect history in the making. The coronavirus or COVID-19 is a global pandemic that unexpectedly impacted our communities. With the closures of non-essential businesses, schools, and universities, almost every state in the union and many countries abroad has issued a stay-at-home order, instructing residents to shelter in place and self-quarantine. What does this mean? What does this look like? How is our community coping? These are some of the questions circulating around our community as we collectively try to conceptualize what was occurring. Like most of you, I have never dealt with a pandemic. However, in 2018, I had the opportunity to learn about crisis collecting during my training at Johns Hopkins University. Crisis collecting, when the museum takes initiative to document history in the making, has become increasingly important in the past decade. The Boston bombing marathon, 9-11 and the Miami Pulse shooting are, and other tragedies are a few examples in which our colleagues collected materials and stories to create exhibitions for reflection, memorializing, and to better understand what occurred. From our colleagues, we have toolkits that museum professionals can use in case a crisis hits our community. While we have these tools, it is hard to compare COVID-19 to these types of tragedies. Since COVID-19 is a virus and the public health response has been to close most physical businesses and cultural organizations, museums cannot yet collect any physical memorials like the crises listed above. Also, there is a fear that any objects we might want to collect could be contaminated themselves and would need isolation or special treatment before they could even be handled. And even if we could collect physical objects, they could not be seen in person by anyone since museums are mostly closed. Due to this, we must utilize multimedia platforms, at least for now. During the first week of isolation, my art department started an online campaign to collect pictures and testimonies of people living in quarantine through Facebook, Instagram, and emails. As interest grew, I included phone calls and text messages for accessibility purposes. The idea was to have pictorial testimonies, but as the exhibition grew, people cross country and internationally submitted content. As the responses poured in, it was both touching and enlightening to learn how people were coping. For the newly unemployed to high-risk individuals, whether they have autoimmune disease or in the 50 plus age group, and even some luckily enough to feel relatively unaffected, these responses and images have been digitized through the creative lens of, of local artist Joycelyn Tedesco. The testimonies and corresponding pictures were put on steel gray backgrounds, and the color of steel gray was chosen because it represents self-sufficiency and isolation. What is a better way to represent our current situation? One can visit the online exhibition at umuseum.org. And in the remaining two minutes, I'd rather be more transparent of what this experience was like, why you should collect and things to consider if you're going to move forward with this type of collecting as an institution. For the environment, like I noted in the presentation, we can't physically go out and collect things because of that fear of having the virus on it. There's still so much we just don't know. Um, luckily, I was fortunate enough, though, to build partnerships with local community members, and we were able to receive isolation gowns and masks that are have been quarantined and will be on display for our physical exhibition, which will happen on September 20th, because our public noted they wanted an, ex an exhibition to understand what this is in tangible objects. And luckily, we actually received full underwriting for this exhibition. 
therefore thus proving the point that when you listen to your community, it matters and that you can actually have something materialize that is fully funded. Because for museums, we have to be cognizant of the financial ramifications, especially more so now. When it comes to the actual physical collecting, I did an AAM presentation about this type of collecting. And I really want to drive in the point of the emotional expectations that does translate with this type of collecting. It's terrifying because we've never dealt with something like this before. And although we have toolkits to better assess what is going on, when you physically do it, you have to make sure that you have the confidence to go out and do these collections because you can't slow down momentum, even if things aren't coming your way. So you have to be creative when you go about collecting this type of material. Additionally, someone made a comment during a presentation that there is no trauma affected when it comes to the person physically collecting. And I want to dispel that because while I started this, pre, um, this type of collecting, I only have 10 seconds, um, while I started to collect these type of materials, I started to connect with colleagues that I only see maybe once or twice a year. And what made it so powerful and emotional is that I learned that a lot of these colleagues that I work with either had COVID or passed of COVID. And that was emotionally hard to process because out of this entire process, eight of my colleagues passed away from COVID and nine more were affected. So you have to be able that you are emotionally prepared to tell this story and continue with it regardless of any ramifications that comes to you because it is important. Their story deserves to be told and their story deserves to be archived. Thank you.